All right, so this is how we're going to uh, take a picture and turn it into a prosthetic butt. So you want to start with attached canvas. Pick any of these planes, and we'll stick it to one of those planes, and we'll select the image. So we'll take the picture that we just used. Just load it up. And I'm going to do a horizontal flip so it's facing the direction I like. Here's the rough draft that we want to create. Okay. Mm -hmm. So now all I have to do is start sketching on this. Uh, if I want it to be an actual size, then I can take the canvas that I have, I can right click on it, and I can do calibrate, and I can set two points to the back mm -hmm. and the front of your foot, and I can set that to whatever size I want. So how long do you want your foot to be? Mm -hmm. Do you remember what we were saying last time? I don't. I want to say it, so was, I like said it was like 200. Just, just under like 10 inches. So it's like 250 millimeters or so. Yeah. So we'll set that to 250. So then anything we'll design will be scaled to kind of your foot size. Yep. And then it becomes very easy. We start sketching. So to draw a sketch, oh, we click the create sketch. Mm -hmm. We pick a plane that we want to draw on. So I see this uh, about view. four different sketches open at the bottom, and I'll show them and then you show them why. <laughs> it's like, wait, what? Yeah, every time you click sketch, it'll start creating a new one. So we can um, basically start making lines and rectangles and all sorts of shapes. So I'm going to start with a line, and I'm just going to draw a, a flat kind of portion here. So that's the first part of our, our body. Then I'm going to start drawing kind of. Let's go down to the spline so that I can get some of this arcing shape. That was my favorite. Sure, the spline. I was still confused by it, and it didn't follow the pattern, like on the drawing like that. I started with um, an x-ray of a foot. I thought that would be a good idea to kind of like see where the bones are. Yeah. And uh, it did not follow anything <laughs> when I hit it. Yeah. So. It can be it can be tricky to work with the splines. The only way I can figure out how to get a curved so line. <laughs> kind of the line there, and then I'll just curve it. There we go. Let's start. Maybe we can do a three point arc so I can do an arc shape to kind of get that curvature. Uh, whichever one of these you want to actually use. So I can keep doing this one. We don't care about this pylon attachment thing, so we won't try to recreate that. Mm -hmm. Just kind of the spines. And anytime, uh, so when you're uh, adding points on, it'll it'll tell you when you're connecting to another point. So see how if I'm trying to draw a line here, it's not connecting to anything. I'm not getting anything popping up. Mm -hmm. Once I go to that extra point, uh, I get a blue square, mm -hmm. and it's actually snapping to that point right. for me. So I can do that. Maybe this looks like an arc that I could draw in. There I've got the rough outline of your foot. Mm -hmm. If I want to start cutting out pieces, uh, I can do that. I can uh, create more sketches. I can draw an ellipse. I can draw more ellipses. So I drew that. I, it's not exactly where I want it to be. Mm -hmm. So I can actually use the undo ellipse, and I can get rid of things that I previously drew. So if I make a mistake, maybe I didn't want that curve to look like that. Right. Oh, I, I, I definitely this. used undo. Put that straight down. down. And straight over. Yeah. Yeah. And then uh, let's just draw rectangles instead for cutouts. There's a cutout. There's a cutout. 
Okay, so there's the general shape that I want. And if I want to actually make that into a 3D object, I use the extrude command. So I can click on this to extrude. You know, I didn't select those two, so there's going to be holes in my shape. Mm -hmm. I can kind of scroll around to the other side, and I can give it some more. So now I have a basic shell of my foot. Mm -hmm. And then if I want to start uh, changing things, getting some angles in there, uh, I can start filling, filling, filling in there. So fillets will add curvature to the foot. Usually you want to, you can select multiple curves, multiple lines at the same time, and you can fill up the all at once. So I could, if I fill it too much, then I get rid of the whole shape. But mm -hmm. as long as I fill it, it just goes with it. And you don't have to just use the mouse. I can type in a radius that I want to fill it by. So this is where fusion can get very, very precise. Mm -hmm. So that's how you would get the angles that you wanted. If I look at this, I can actually measure those angles. I can inspect things. So I can measure how far this from where we are. Distances. I can measure angles by doing other, other kinds of things. Yep. And then I just start adding in more curvature. And maybe you wanted to have a little damper, right? Mm -hmm. You got a damper drawn in there. Oh, I forgot to put it in your picture. You want to put it in now. You can do that. So I can do to create a sketch. I can create a sketch right on that piece. So see the things that highlight? Yep. So any plane that highlights, I can draw on that plane. So I can draw on that plane. I could draw my damper as just a rectangle. right in there. And then if I scroll around, I can take that and I can extrude that. So then I put my damper. And then if you also want to make changes, you can actually go back to your original sketch. And you can edit just that sketch. So if I want to put the damper in the back, I can then take this line. I can draw that in. Now if you edit it here, will it change the extruded version? Or you just edit that layer? Uh, no, it'll just change the sketch. But then I can very easily put that into the... I can extrude it out. I can drag it all the way over. Uh, if you're good about how you're designing, you don't have to drag it all the way over. You can actually click the face that you want it to go to, automatically do it for well, you. Considering you've done what I couldn't do in hours in minutes, so I mean, uh, good at designing? No, not even close. Oh, I'm not good either. I, I'm crappy. But I've been doing it for longer than you. Not in this lab, you're not. So there you go. Make sense? Yeah, it all makes sense. I yeah. just hope that, you know, take it home with me and actually get something done. Sometimes, uh, and, and again, it'll it'll give you little errors if it can't do something that you want it to do. Mm -hmm. So if you have weird curves, mm -hmm. uh, it'll struggle with filling. Wow. I'll try to make that five. How do you feel about the toe curve? With, if we have that cut out to allow for the, um, the extension of the toes. Do you mm -hmm. think they need to be curved up? Or do you think that's just flat too? I don't know. What is what is Trisha doing? Trisha is doing toe inserts, uh, and she's going to be printing her toes flat, but she's doing them in uh, flexible plastic. Mm -hmm. and the flexible plastic actually bends. So we're going to measure what kind of angles we get from this joint. We could do both ways. 
was so, wondering, like, if she did something, I don't want to do the same thing. Because that way we can try two different things. Right. And figure out what's best. Try plateaus. Try that and then just make them flex enough to allow for that. Yeah. So we'll try maybe yours won't hinge. And we'll see what we get. Yeah. Are you talking about the... The, the toe angle right there? Yeah, just on the bottom. Just make yeah. that flat and then keep the... Sure. Okay. All right. We'll see. It's the idea of 3D printing. You can have an idea, try something, and if it works, great. If it doesn't, then you can rapidly fix it and change it. Okay. Right. Any questions? Anything that you want recorded? Uh... So the other other interesting thing that you could do, you could actually put in a uh, space for your pylon, right. right? You want the pylon to be able to attach to this. Mm -hmm. uh, so the pylon, if you want to add an attachment for that, so we want the pylon to go on the top, right? Mm -hmm. So we can go and we can uh, use this box over here and we can zoom to the top. I can create a sketch on the top. Okay. And you probably want it to be where do you want? Do you want centered? Um, well, I figured it'd have to be centered between the two cutouts. I mean, just for durability and... So the nice thing about Fusion, when I'm doing um, my sketching, mm -hmm. there are better ways to do this, I'm sure. But I chose this face to draw on. Right? That's why I want my pylon. As I'm scrolling along the surface, when I hit a triangle, that's the midpoint. Mm -hmm. So I can draw a little line to be a reference point for the midpoints. So let's say I want my pylon to be right in the middle. Sure. I can center it right there. Then. Right. It'll be right in the middle. I can do my sketch, my circle, center diameter circle, right there, right in the middle, however big my pylon is going to be. Mm -hmm. uh, so how big is a standard plus size pylon? That is a good question. How would we figure that out? Go Google. Google. <laughs> I don't remember. I have no clue. Yep, 30 millimeters. So we want a circle that's 30 millimeters. So that is the space that the pylon would jam into. Mm -hmm. But we want actually to have that pylon be able to, uh, we kind of want a, a resting circle that we can fit inside of. So to do that, I can actually use this sketch command and go down to offset. I can select my circle. And I can give it some width. Maybe I want that to be two millimeter wide. And then I can take this extrude. I can select all these little arc pieces. That was on the other side. I can extrude that one first. Okay. So now I have a little clamp that the pylon can sit inside of. Figure out a way to attach it inside of it. There you go. There's your rough plus Yeah. Ten minutes later. Ten minutes. I don't know whether to love you or hate you. 